Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Talks with Tony. I um, actually got an email from one of my patrons from Patreon, so thank you so much. Uh, you, you put it in the subject and I happen to see it. Aloha. I met a guy about a year ago and from jump we had sex. At the time, I wanted a real relationship to blossom, but now I know it didn't because I was operating from brokenness and didn't set a standard. We stopped talking quickly because we weren't building how I expected. Again, I'm pretty sure I played a huge role in that for not starting it right. Over the last year until now, he's reached out tons of times. It always, I've always let it be known we're not having sex again and he said he was fine with that. Based on how we didn't prosper in the past, I don't trust him. I think he's full of it and I've expressed this to him. He's been really gracious with me even with me being difficult. I've cut him off several times for not coming correct or the way I think he should with regard to certain things. For example, he's asked me on a date and I ended up paying for part of it. I'm fine with that to an extent because I make my own money, but I feel like he asked he should have taken care of it. That led me to think he was just trying to waste my time and get me back in bed. I cut him off again because he randomly posted a woman on his Snapchat. No caption or anything, just a picture. I didn't ask questions, I just blocked his number. A few weeks later, which is today, he found me on WhatsApp an app I use to communicate with business associates in other countries. I unblocked his number and he asked why I blocked him. I explained why and he said it was just a friend and said he wouldn't do it again. He asked for the opportunity to get to know me all over again because the first time around was rushed with sex. He asked that we become friends and he hopes that'll create a strong foundation for a friendship, I mean for a relationship in the future. He says he can see himself with me because I'm a good person but he knows I've been hurt before, so he wants to build trust and friendship. Why does he keep coming back? I know I'm being difficult, and we haven't slept together in almost a year. We've gone out and even talk on the phone often. When he's not cut off, but he keeps coming back trying to prove himself to me. Why? Based on our history, should I give him a shot? If I do, how do I move on? I don't want to keep being difficult, but I want it to be known I'm not with the mess. Well, I'll tell you this. Something obviously happened in your life um, and you've gone through some things, you've experienced some things. There's a lack of knowledge there. There's a lack of self-worth there and some things have happened in your life. And so you jumped into bed with them. You jumped into bed with him and it's kind of a rule of thumb for any and every man to not take a woman serious who has sex with him right away. I remember a guy, you know, who had grown, come from my area and, you know, grown up to become a millionaire and a famous celebrity. You know, I remember him telling me specifically, I was young and he said, if you ever meet a woman and she has sex with you in the first two weeks, keep it moving. Don't deal with her. She, she's not worth it. He said, it took me six months to sleep with my wife. And that was his advice. And that's kind of the, just the general consensus that a lot of times people don't like to hear that because it's too real. And so it's kind of women, you're going into the barbershop, you're going into the locker room. And, and when you hear the truth that men say to one another, you're like, oh, that's a double standard. Oh, this and that. But you know, it is what it is and everyone has the right to set their own standard. So if it's a double standard, that's because you allow a double standard, which you could then say as a woman, I'm not sleeping with a man fast, and if a man tries to sleep with me fast, I'm cutting him off. You could set that standard. But, you know, we don't always, and this right here happens. So you slept with him, and you stopped talking because you weren't building how you expected. But at the same time, it's like, what did you expect? A man is coming to be with you for one reason, and that's for sex. So if you give him sex right away, you've given him the trophy before he's even gotten in the blocks to run the race. 
And so at that point, there's nothing really to build. But see, the thing about it is you start having sex. He didn't get his full feel of you. He wasn't tired of you. He wanted a friend with benefits at that time. And so the number I always tell women is 11. By the 11th time that you've slept with a man, that's when you should know if it's real or not. If you are having sex before marriage, I don't condone sex before marriage, but if you're going to do it, and the reason why I say, I say 11 is because when you think about it, it kind of goes gradually in stages to where, you know, things start to get a little spicier, you know, and it changes missionary. And then, you know, stuff starts to change. But by the time you get to 11, you've, you know, experimented and you've done things a few different ways. And that's a man kind of taking you through his uh, obstacle course or through his, you know, circus of, you know, love making to kind of gauge and see where you are in the bedroom. And so after those 10, by that 11 time, he pretty much has an idea of, of where you stand in his life and how he factors in, you know, your sex life. And so with this right here, he wasn't done with you. You know, he was just getting started. And then when you, when you kind of cut him off, it confused him because he's like, hold on. Like, does this woman have standards or not? Like, I'm confused. Like, how do you sleep with me? Boom. Right from the start. But then you flip the script and you're like, Miss Holier Than Thou, you know, Miss, I got to let you go because this isn't moving fast enough for me. So now the guy's kind of confused. Like, what is this? You know, did, did, did she find Jesus? Like, where's all these standards and, and, you know, where's all this integrity coming from? So really, he's intrigued with you. But to be honest with you, from the overall tone and the details that you gave me, it sounds like you're an ego grab. It sounds like he came back and he's reaching out to you for his ego. And you said he's reached out to me tons of times. So tons of times could be um, once every week for the whole year that y'all have, you said over the last year. So that could be 52 times. You could be saying tons of times. But tons of times really for a committed man would be every day. And a man who's trying to win you and he knows you have access to his Snapchat and his Instagram and all of that, He's not going to post another woman this abstract type of, you know, whatever term you use, this post of this other woman, knowing that it's going to raise questions and kind of. And then he says as a friend. So it's not like a cousin, you know, it's not a family member. So men don't post women online unless he's trying to show that woman that you mean something to me and you mean enough that I'll share you publicly because this girlfriends who haven't been posted you know, and been with a guy for a year, two years. So when a man takes and posts a woman, he's sending a message to that woman he posted. And so for him to do, do that, knowing that you can see, it lets me know that he's playing games. Because if a man really wants you, he, uh, another woman won't even exist. He'll try to downplay his relationship with his sister and his mother to make you feel like you are the only and the sole woman in his universe. And so this guy is playing games and you have to be safe and sorry. And then you also got to realize when you have sex in the beginning, like from the jump, as you stated, that is like building a mansion on the sand. So to be with him and to continue to try to make this thing work, especially after a year hiatus, you would be going back to the construction site and continuing to build a mansion on the sand with no foundation, no firm foundation. You're literally just stacking right in the sand and you have not, you know, got a foundation and, and rooted and grounded to where it can stand the test of time. And so what will happen, you have become intriguing, you've become a test. And so what will happen is he will continue to pursue you. And if you are still single, and you're still entertaining him because you block him and unblock him, block him and unblock him, eventually you're going to get weak and desperate because you're going to say, well, nobody else has approached me. I don't have anybody else. I'm not dating anybody else. This guy's still knocking on my door. I might as well give in. You give in, then you're back in the bed. 
Now he says, boom, I got you. That's what you get for trying to play me. You want to think you're going to play me. You want to be bigger than me. You want to be badder than me. You want to try to use me. You want to try to sleep with me and think you're just going to walk off and leave. Girl, I'm player from the Himalayas. I'm the man. And so he comes back out of that ego and he gets you and he reels you back in and then he sticks it to you. So now it's like either you put up or shut up. It's you stay here. And you deal with this mediocre treatment that I'm giving you, this lackluster love that I'm giving you while I'm entertaining these other women, or you get back on your high horse with, and, and try to grab the last little bit of self-esteem that you have after I've broken you and you try to ride off into the sunset. Good luck with that. I hope you can do it. That's essentially what he's testing you to do. So when a man comes back and he's serious and understand this, he will go through every hoop. He'll jump through fiery hoops and he will make you know without a shadow of a doubt that he wants you and that you're the only one and he's committed to getting you and nothing else in the world matters more to him. This guy is hitting you up on his off days, on his downtime, on his free time when the woman that he really wants is not available because she's working or ignoring him because something he did. That's when he comes right in you with the hopes that he can keep you on the roster, keep you on his practice squad. You know, in football, you have, a, you have the active roster that they get the big checks and you have the practice squad who are expendable and being overworked and underpaid. He wants to keep you on his practice squad just to use you and abuse you because he's not going above and beyond to show you that you are the one and that he wants you. So, hey, that's my take on it. Thank you so much for you know, writing in to me. If you are watching this and you have a question, you can send it in to inbox at tonygaskins.com, inbox at tonygaskins.com. For those of you who are patrons like, like this young lady, thank you so much. Make sure in your subject you put patron um, and I will see it and I will, you know, double check, make sure you're not lying. But thank you so much for the support. We will talk soon.